everybody, it's Wills, aka The Law here, with another excellent guide to Fours Pro Viaduct. So if you're watching these to get a kind of idea of how to play King of the Hill and Fours, or just King of the Hill in general, I really recommend starting with my uh, King of the Hill Fuel video. I know Fuel is not the best map, or even played map, but it gives a good overview of what you want to do in King of the Hill in general. So Viaduct is another Koth map which is not symmetrical but mirrored, meaning the cliff is on this left side, but for blue team it's on the right side. Whereas this flat area here is on red's right side and blue's left side. So there are three main rollouts for Viaduct. There's right side, left side, Obviously for each side it's a little different because on blue side the cliff is right not left. But the cliff rollout, uh, it's really not that strong in general. You probably don't want to do it with your whole combo. But sending one flank class up there is very strong both in fours and sixes. As always, height advantage is key. So keeping someone on cliff allows you to spam the point. One of the most common rollouts for the combo is just to go out through what is called the main. So it's right through here, and usually under this little balcony right here. And finally, you have what's called the stair side rollout. Uh, it's left on blue, but you roll up the right side with red, up these stairs, and here you are on this little patio right here, watching the point. So scout rollout, really not much to it. You can either go out main, or go out stair side, or go out cliff side. Anyway, we'll get to the point in around the same time. This is a really small map, so you really don't have to worry too much about rollouts on any class other than demo. For soldier, you've got two options. One, you can do a real rollout, in which case your medic needs to buff you before you do it. Or you can just walk the point with your medic. On a map this small, the latter is really not a bad choice a lot of the time. Walking to point allows you to get there with 300 health, jump in, all your rockets loaded, just nice, strong, with a little late soldier play. If you do want to roll out a soldier, however, I'd recommend going stair side. Grab that pack, and you can land up on this roof here, giving you a little bit of height advantage or just walk through this tunnel. The alternate choice is to go cliffside. You'll be buffed to 300 by your medic, so you don't need to grab the pack. But you get up here, kind of rain hell down, and even jump up on this rock here. The demo rollout is important to get there as quickly as possible. You want to just throw two stickies, grab an overheal, get onto the point, and spam down into choke. It's really important to get aggressive with your demo man and have a scout come and back him up to protect him. Because if you can win this mid fight, you can win the entire round. Your combo is going to want to either come up under here or up on stairs in general. Occasionally you will go up this left side, but that's only to switch it up and in general can be treated the same as coming through main. Viaduct is a map that really rewards aggression, so keep that in mind. Get the high ground, fire down, if you're up here it becomes exponentially harder for them to get you off. There are lots of cute names for all the little places on this map, but in general I find it's easier if you just use general names. So this is Cliff, this is Patio. And even, even stuff as simple as right side, left side is a lot more useful than using really specific names. That said, this area up here is commonly called China. So if a team you're on or somebody on your team refers to somewhere as China, you know where it is. This balcony up here in China is a common hiding place for snipers. So be very careful if you think they are running a sniper and you've seen them run a sniper in the past. Your flank should keep a solid eye on tunnel and their stair area. You 
because this is a good common place for a team to push up onto point. After a mid fight goes down, one of two things will have happened. You'll either have won the mid fight or you've lost the mid fight. Uh, if you've lost the mid fight and your medic is out, excellent. Tell your medic to run back to spawn and wait for respawns. If your medic is dead, however, you need to sack for the medic. On a map as small as this, a single crit charge or an uber charge can really make all the difference. And because you come up much faster when you don't have the point, it's totally worth trading your lives for their medic's life. But hey, maybe you did win mid. That's great. If they are down two or more in fours, sixes is a little different. If they are down a solid number of players, you want to do what's called a forward hold. I addressed this in my last video, forward holding in general. So you might want to re-watch that if you're a little iffy on what that is or why you do it. So here's the basic overview of how to forward hold on Viaduct. The basis of my forward hold is going to be off of a sixes experience. But the same general feel should translate into force as well. First of all, you want your demo buffed preferably up on this cliff here. From here, he can watch and sticky up this door, as well as watch and sticky up this door as well, over here. As tempting as it is to continually pocket the demo, in this case it might be better to let him sit by himself, leaving your other combo a little stronger. So therefore, I'd recommend you have your soldier and medic, and maybe scout, unless you want to off-class something else at this point, over here on this uh, stair side. Here you can watch this door, as well as this door, and generally span them out from pushing in easily. On that note, I do want to point out that forward holding with a scout is not necessarily the best idea. A pyro is a lot stronger, and uh, maybe you could even throw in an engineer if you really wanted to stick them in their base for the entire round. If they try to push out stair side here, have your demo rotate over onto balcony. The additional spam will make them force the uber early so they can't use the up to the point as easily. If they try to come out main, same thing. Demo rotates over, combo moves over, and you spam them out, make them force uber. You don't want them to leave their spawn at this point without using uber. Finally, if they try to come out left side, which should be extremely hard with all the sticky traps and spam your demo's throwing down, uh, this should be the side they least likely want to push out of. Then you can start having your combo rotate over, all the way from uh, right side to left. The point of this forward hold, again, is to make sure they pop their uber early, and they can't use it to capture the point as easily. So okay, that's all well and good, what if you messed up mid, and now you've got an uber disadvantage, right, and they're doing a forward hold on you. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to get uh, two of your players, right, uh, probably the demo and soldier. I love the scout, stay and spawn and build uber with your medic, right, and you want to take them and just suicide to try and kill the enemy medic. Coming out main is probably the best for this. Uh, you're going to go for a kind of suicide bomb play. Uh, it's got the biggest area to come out of and it's the hardest to spam. You can notice both uh, stair side and cliff side are going to have these little choke points. So main is probably your best bet for coming out of. Once you get your uber however, oftentimes you're going to want to come out stair side if not main. And uh, just fight their combo. If you can get them to pop first, great. If not, even if you have to pop first, just focus on getting as many frags as you can. Again, in fours, two frags is huge. You have a huge player advantage now. If you can pop them so you have an uber advantage, their forward hold is over. Vice versa, if you are forward holding and they force you to pop your uber early, your forward hold is over and you have to back up. You do not want to forward hold unless you have an uber advantage because you will just die when they pop uber into you couple general point capping tips. Uh, you can use something called corner capping uh, right here. I'm barely on the point. Barely on the point. And it still caps. Uh, you can do that if you want to cap even if they're spamming the point. Uh, that could be a really useful tactic. 
both scouts and soldiers are extremely useful on this map, extremely mobile. Uh, you can jump almost anywhere on the map and really get around quickly on this very small map. A couple common mistakes uh, you often see is if you are getting spammed out, uh, some teams will just like to take it or just let their uber get forced. Obviously that's a, that's a general idea. So uh, if you're getting spammed, rotate. Just move to a new position where they can't spam you as easily. And uh, don't force the uber unless you want it to pop. It's very tempting to hold in this house because, oh, I can't get bombed, like, I can see the point, but they can't shoot at me. But this is a big mistake. Uh, if, if you're in this house, it's a death trap. A single soldier in here will kill you if you're the medic or even any pocket class. You just don't want to be inside this house unless you're rotating up top here. If you think that their team is going to forward hold you, sometimes hiding up here as a soldier or even a scout, it's a really good idea. Their combo walks right by, and you can just jump on the medic, two-shot him, and you're good. Similarly, this balcony, which can be reached by any class, is very useful for getting behind, flanking, and just doing some sneaky hiding plays. And yes, they have fixed it so both red and blue window cells can be walked on now. On the flank, keep in mind you got a lot of health packs here, ammo packs, health and ammo back here. This ammo pack here is uh, very commonly reserved for your demo man. Uh, if you're a scout and you're missing a single shot, please do not pick this up because your demo most likely needs it to keep up his constant stream of spam over the point into the two chokes here. Finally, if you're a soldier holding on cliff, this health and ammo pack here are essential for keeping yourself fully buffed as you watch this point. And again, up on top of this rock, extremely strong for firing down, being almost invulnerable unless they get a direct hit on you. Any class can go up these rocks just by uh, shift jumping, crouch jumping, on both sides. For those of you who aren't aware, crouch jumping is when you jump into the air and then press your crouch key. Uh, for me, it's shift. Uh, for some of you, it'll be C or control. I like shift because it's a lot easier to hit than control. But you just walk up, jump, and press shift, and you'll make a jump a little higher than you normally can. You'd be incredibly surprised at how much shift jumping can increase your mobility. So uh, keep it in mind and use it as a tool, especially as a scout or a soldier. As I said in my last video, Crits Creek is extremely powerful in King of the Hill. Expect your opponent to run it at your first mid, and probably usually first to mid, as you should as well. If your demo does go down, however, don't fear, because in fours, a crit charge on a soldier can be almost as powerful as on a demo. Because there are fewer classes to frag, and it's not like you're just doing a lot of damage, uh, you can just go straight for frags. A soldier's four rockets is easily enough to take out every single player on the other team. In lower level play, you may notice that teams prefer to use uber rather than crits. Uh, feel free to punish them for that. If you run crits, you'll get it first. You pop it early, and uh, they don't have uber advantage anymore because they're, they're dead. dead. Similarly, running a pyro when they have uh, regular uber means you can just easily shut them down by standing at the top of these stairs here, or even uh, here at main they won't be able to get through because you can just air blast them back. As long as the scout goes down, they don't have any classes who can kill a pyro. If your air blasts are good enough at least. Also remember that if you don't have the point, your life is worth a little less. Which means if you trade kill for kill, then it's in your favor to do that as long as you don't have the point. Vice versa, if you do have the point, don't trade away your life because it takes you longer to respawn. As always, uh, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you learned something uh, and uh, good luck on Friday.